Business editor Kate Moody joins us now. Kate, we just heard Ketavan talk there about the political aspect of raising the debt ceiling. What about the financial stakes? Well, October 18th was that big looming deadline when the Treasury said uh, that it would run out of money and potentially default for the first time in U.S. history. Today's agreement will now lift the government's borrowing limit through December 3rd. Uh, that is, as we heard from Ketavan, also the date at which the, through which the government is now funded. So another dual deadline hovering there uh, on debt and another possible government shutdown. That limit is being increased by $480 billion It'll bring the total debt limit of the United States government to just over $28.8 trillion. Now, the American government spends more money than it brings in, and so it has to borrow in order to pay its bills. If it were to run out of money and default on its obligations, that would impact its ability to make bond payments, Social Security and government contractor payments. It would likely drive up the cost of borrowing for businesses and households. A default would likely have sent the economy into recession and damaged America's economy. Now, this short-term deal does give lawmakers around seven weeks to resolve some of their other spending disputes, notably on Joe Biden's social policy and infrastructure bills. Although the U.S. debt ceiling has been lifted or suspended dozens of times since 1960, including three times under Donald Trump, uh, it has usually been done with bipartisan support. But in recent years, it has become a proxy war for these competing spending agendas. Thursday's deal essentially pushes the biggest problems down the road. Well, that announcement has reassured investors, however. We've seen Wall Street rallying, uh, the Dow Jones jumping as much as 500 points earlier. It's up about 450 now. Uh, the tech sector rebounding strongly from losses earlier this week. The Nasdaq is up just under 1.5% this hour. The major European indices also closed higher. We saw gains of 1.5%, a bit more than that, in each Paris and Frankfurt closer to 1% in London. Ireland has agreed to support a global deal establishing a minimum corporate tax rate. It means the country will give up its 12.5% tax rate, which has attracted multinational corporations to put down European bases there. The decision came after negotiators agreed to fix on a 15% tax rate, dropping the phrase at least 15%, which could have opened the door to a higher one. The Irish government expects to lose some €2 billion Euros in revenue each year from these changes, but Finance Minister Pascal Donahoe said he was confident that Ireland would remain an attractive location for international businesses. Joining this agreement is an important decision for the next stage of Ireland's industrial policy, a decision that will ensure that Ireland is part of the solution in respect to future international tax frameworks. This is the right decision. Irish Finance Minister, who is also the head of the Eurogroup, that's the Eurozone Finance Minister's Group, uh, Pascal Donahoe, announcing that big U-turn. EU member states are trying to switch to renewable energy sources. In Germany, authorities have set a target of 65% renewable energy by 2030. A key component is a massive solar power park. Norman Berstecker has the details. 30 kilometers north of Berlin lies Germany's biggest solar power park. 460,000 solar panels stretching over 200 hectares and which are expected to produce enough green energy to save 130,000 tons of CO2 each year. The performance here is around 185 gigawatts. That's enough to provide electricity to 50,000 households. The park is part of Germany's push to reduce greenhouse emissions and transition to renewable energy. German company ENW says it's invested around 100 million euros in the project, which only took a year to complete. A massive undertaking in a country that's not known for its sunshine, and especially in Berlin, where the sun sets at 4 p.m. in winter. But thanks to technological advances of the past decade, the company is expecting a return on investment. For Ten years ago, a solar panel generated 200 to 220 watts. Now we're generating 400 to 500 watts per panel. In 2020, about 45 percent of Germany's electricity consumption came from renewable energy. But much work still needs to be done if the country wants to meet its target of 65 percent renewable energy by 2030, especially as it continues to phase out nuclear and coal power plants. 
In order to reach that goal, Germany would need to at least triple its solar electricity production over the next decade. I'll be back with more business news later on, Monty. Okay, Kate Moody with business. Thanks so much.